Oh <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Yes. Are you ready? It's another edition of KFC Radio on the Barstool Sports Network. Feidelberg got a sore throat calling in from Zoom. I'm uh, I'm here in studio. And if you guys aren't sick yet, I I got you sick Monday, uh, so you're getting you're getting sick. Just so we're clear. Son of a bitch! I feel great. I feel so bad. It's it's actually kind of nice. I this is this will be the highest I talk the whole episode because if I talk any louder. My tonsil pops into my mouth. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna pick a fight with you so I can just yell over you now. Yeah, yeah, no, you'd be happy. You'd be more welcome to. No, I mean it's, it's an gonna ep- be a very soothing episode. It's an well, I, I don't know if we can call it that given some of the subject matter today, but uh, you know, I, I I said this on Kevin Clancy's show. Uh, there was a time where it was like, should should we talk about this? Does should Barstool cover this? And now I think it's like unequivocally, yes, we've been doing this for so long. And whether or not it's, it, you know, we're goofy, we're funny, we're weird, but we've been doing this kind of shit for 10 years now. And so we talk about everything. Why wouldn't we talk about this? And while, you know, maybe we don't have all the statistics or the most educated on on, uh, on the topic and politics or whatever, this shit is not even political. This is common goddamn sense. And... I, well, I don't know about you. The weirdest shit for me yesterday was like I saw it and then saw that it was an elementary school and realized like, oh, wait a minute. This is one of the bad ones. And then like the Internet wasn't talking about it. And I I sadly and embarrassingly went about my day and not until uh, I got a text message last night. If you listen to the podcast earlier, it, it, it kind of jarred me. Um, someone was complaining that I was selling shirts that said sleep when you're dead, which wasn't true. I'm selling shirts that said sleep when you're tired, but they were like, you have a platform and you should use it. And I kind of was like, I don't, I don't get down with all the platform shit. Use your platform however you want to use it. But my point being, it did kind of like snap me out of it. And I was like, yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've been complaining about the Mets and, you know, talking about whatever when we just had, you know, one of the real bad ones. And I hate to, to, this one's worse than this one, and that one wasn't so bad, and this one was a small one, and this one's a big one. But when the when the truly heartbreaking and disastrous happens, usually there's some reaction, and it's coming around today. But yesterday, I don't know, man. There was not a lot. I didn't see a lot. Not a thing. I I I I'm with you. I saw it. I don't even know if I hesitated scrolling. Which is like, like you know, <clears throat> I saw like gunman at elementary school, or like active shooter at elementary school, and it was actually way before <clears throat> anything happened. Like, yeah, like it was. It. I honestly, I want to say it was like three hours before the next report. I think it must have been when like he had that first like shootout with the police officers, um, and um, and it didn't get traction at all. So I just scrolled by it and. And then when I saw like the you know, the real reports, I thought about it more, obviously. But very much like you, I didn't think about changing anything. But I don't feel bad. I'm angry about that, and like I hate that I am. But like, it's not my fault. No, <laughs> like, I, 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 I would. I'm not being. I, I, and I don't think that's not what you're saying. I don't think. But like in my own head, I'm like, you're not a bad person. You're just like you're what society has made you. Like you see all those tweets that are like. Don't let this become the normal. Don't become numb to this. Too late. I know, it honestly is. I, I think it's it's been we've been desensitized, and I also think it's too late to fix. I don't rationally see a way that this stops. I just don't. I like the people, the the politicians who want to stop it, uh, will never be allowed to make it to a level where they could stop it because the NRA and the big gun gun lobbyists and the money and the power are all in bed together. And all the politicians who even might want to fix it at the end of the day, they want to get elected more than anything. And they'll tell themselves, well, I got to get elected first before I can do anything. So let me play ball with them and let me, you know, do what I got to do. And then it's too late. Then you're in bed with them. I, 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 it's sad. And I just don't even get 
how it works, but like all these other countries just did it. And I don't it's 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 crazy. They just did it. Somebody just fucking signed it into into Congress, into action, whatever they do in these, you know, prime minister, president, whoever, whatever, they just did it. And we just won't do it. And and I just don't ever have hope that they will. So oh, yeah, I, it's I, I I hope the uh, I hope another generation has has more uh, stick to itiveness than than I do, or than it seems like you do as well. Where it's like I don't I don't have faith in anybody. I don't have faith in the system. I don't have faith that anything will change. This is my life, and it's not my life. Like, I I have not been directly affected by this. But I've you know what? But like, what's but, it? It might be. Yeah, it, right, it's, it's yeah. one of these things that like I. It's not crazy anymore, and it hasn't been for a long time. But you know, I well, I had already forgotten about the ten people Buffalo who were shot if by like, like it a didn't even happen. Life. I'd forgotten about that, which is so sickening and sad. That was what last week? Yeah, <laughs> I, it was like ten I days totally ago. About that. And, and 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 like it's it is not far fetched that it could happen to you. And and you know what? That's the one thing. And I hate to say it, but until some politician's kid gets slaughtered, nobody's doing shit. And uh, I, and honestly, even if it did happen, I think that that one politician would try and the rest of the guys would rally against him because they need their political careers to thrive and they need their money and their power. But until but I, I guess that's what I don't I just don't understand. And like, you know, we're always very open that we're two people who don't understand what we're talking about basically ever. Um, but like, it is a very popular platform. So why can't politicians change? like? It's something like seventy some odd percent of Americans want common Guns sense control. Kind of yeah, and like, so if seventy percent, that's a lot of the vote. That's most of the vote. If that can't, if that can't get you to do it, what what possibly? That's can't? what I mean. That's where the system is broken. It's not democracy, and it's not power by the people. It's it's. NRA and money and lobbyists and like I, I truly believe that before a politician if you came out and said I am against this I will stop this and you had power I think you end up with a bullet in your head before you end up uh, the president I genuinely believe that they would do whatever it takes to stop that person and I think it would be more likely like political you know dark shadowy uh, lobbying like you, that 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 uh that candidate would be slandered that candidate would be dropping out of the race for a different reason i just don't think they'll ever let it happen to the point that the you know that the, they actually could enact change i think i maybe i maybe it just takes uh a generation of like the whoever runs the nra to be from our generation and maybe have a little bit of understanding uh, but those people don't, you know, uh, young, old, rich, poor, whatever. If you are a gun nut, you're a gun nut and there'll never be any bending. But like I used to, you know, it, the thing, the, the thing that's crazy for me is the arguments are dead. They're done. There was a time like in the beginning of the internet and in the beginning of social media where the, the people saying, well, why don't we ban cars and knives? People like took that as a real argument. And now, okay, well, and like those things well, are. How about, how about, how about, fine. I'll meet you in the middle. Let's fucking regulate guns and and shit the same way we regulate cars. That's all we're asking for. How about that. How that's about all that? we're fucking. At. If you hunt and you're safe and you are in law enforcement and all that shit, you can have a gun. You have to take a test. You have to have regular checkups. It can't be of a certain type of gun, certain ammo. We'll do all that. Okay, and then you can, those people can have your guns. What we want to do is stop the crazy people. What we want to do is stop the ease that you can get it. And we want to stop the massive guns that are only used for mass casualties. Can you, can you do that for us, you dumb fucking assholes? And then all of the arguments, they, none of them fly. Like, the, the old, uh, it's not, it's not the guns, it's the mental health. Well, there, there are, everybody else in every country has mental health problems too. They don't have the shootings because they control the guns. They don't control the mental health. They haven't fixed the mental health. They fixed the guns. So also poof. the people who are who are the pro gun, the, the Venn diagram between pro gun people and pro mental health people, 
pretty small. And that's what drives pretty me even crazier <laughs> because the the life is precious pro life platform are the same people letting this fucking happen. You have to have your baby. You can't have an abortion. Let the baby live because every life matters. But by the time you're eight, we'll send you off to school to be fucking slaughtered. But we're all about life. Fuck off, you dumb dicks. There's a Ooh. mental health problem. Well, there's a mental health problem all over the world and no other mass shootings. Gun laws don't work. Bad guys don't follow the rules. Well, other countries have bad guys and they don't Ooh. have mass shootings. It's it's like I I feel like I'm taking crazy pills where there was a time where I felt like I was too I was I wasn't educated enough or I didn't know the stats or I didn't know the 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 reality and now it's like we have the proof it's every other country and you know maybe I can understand where it's like we're bigger than other countries we have more people uh, some of these things are different so maybe it won't go as smoothly. Or as like instantly, but um, let's try. Yeah, well, let's that's, fucking that's... try. And if I'm wrong, then you can have your guns back, and we'll just you know whatever. But let's fucking try. That's that's what it comes down to, really. Like that's really all it comes down to is just let's try something. Right. Like what 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 has been attempted since Sandy Hook? Nothing. You know, I mean, I, I, uh, the, the big there, tweet, there might be an answer. No, the, but... the the big tweet going viral is like the the only thing that's changed is uh, every school has like active shooter drills and all that. And so we just oh, said okay. to you, the, 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 the final line of the tweet is something like, we just told you, you know, good luck and pray for the best. That's, that's what's changed. No, what's changed is that like, we also decided to give anxiety to every child right. that it might happen to them. Bro, and then I, the odds are it obviously won't. But we'll make sure you think about it every day when you go to school. That's been our big change. Uh, I, the you know I've been posting those silly videos of Shay where she asks me all these questions about what happens if a tree falls on our house, what happens if a bear attacks me, what happens if there's a tornado, and there are all these things that are one in a zillion. Mm. And if she were to get wind of this and she were to understand what happened, and she I mean she would crumble as a person as a little person she wouldn't be able to handle it and if she would ask me about it it would be a much more crazy enough it would be a much more realistic conversation where i would have to be like you know yeah it's probably not going to happen to you but these other things are like lightning striking you this is like i don't know i don't know what if someone who doesn't like barstool decided to bust in the door i don't know that's more likely in this goddamn country and, yeah. and and the fact that, like, yeah, you even have to have these conversations with little kids who are not equipped for it. We're barely I can't, equipped I for can't it. fucking imagine that. I, and, and particularly for my little girl, like, every kid. But, like, Shay is such a worrisome, like, she's such an empath. She worries about everything and everybody. She The other day, a, a nest fell out of the tree and a baby bird died. And, John, we almost didn't make it through the day. She was weeping all day long we'd be playing we'd be having fun all of a sudden i look over crying uh, what's what happened you get hurt did the bees sting you something wrong oh, i'm just thinking about the bird <laughs> 12 hours later i'm putting you down to bed you want to sing a song you want to read a book but what about that bird daddy if i had to if i had to say you know what about the 19 kids your age who got massacred heavens to betsy and 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 so whether you're a dumbass who cites the Constitution, whether you're a dumbass. Dude, who, who gives a fuck about the Constitution? Don't I mean, bring that up on this podcast. I can't even. We're anti -constitution. We're anti -constitution. If Whether it's that, whether it's the bad guys don't follow laws, whether it's the mental health, whether you're going to blame the police on this one, whatever it is, the bottom line is this. I say to you, we should take steps to stop the babies from being massacred at school. And those people say, yes, but. Yeah, right, right. If you say but to my statement of that, you're a bad person. You're a dumb person. You're a bad person. You're a brainwashed person. And I think you're an absolute scumbag. That's what correct. it boils down to. You are correct. We should. Yeah, like that's it, period. And I had a guy call up radio today, and he was a nice enough guy, and he was actually being very emotional about it. And he and he was like, I have I have an AR in my house. And I was like, if I told you right now to give that gun back, and if I could snap my fingers and promise that everyone else would do the same thing, 
you know, and and then and the problem would be fixed. Would you do it? And I think he even did say like, yes, I would. But then it's like, you know what? Go do it. Go give yeah. it in right now. Go give it to one of those amnesty things. Don't go to a buyback. Go do it. But if you, you, if you have a gun, you're gay. You're so gay. <laughs> You're so such a good. fucking pussy. You're so gay. <laughs> and I never understand that one either. The good guy with a gun. Yeah. And, like, I, and I, I choose that word because that would really offend people with guns. But <laughs> if you got a gun, you're, you're gay. so yeah. gay. <laughs> and, and how about the, you know, you're either a, a, a dumb gay ball who leaves <laughs> the gun out because listen, you want to be, you want to protect your family, right? So if someone bursts in the door and tries to kill you and your family, you want to have your gun ready. Well, I guarantee you, before you ever save your family, turning into John McClane, your kid's going to play with that gun and blow his head off. Or you're one of the smart people who's safe about it, and you have your gun in a safe, and you have your ammo in the other safe, and you have them on separate houses, and nobody can get to it. So by the time these guys burst in the fucking, in your John McClane fantasy, when your house is being invaded, you're fucking dead anyway. The good guy with a gun should only be a, a law enforcement. And even yeah. then, even then, there's countries who are like, we don't even give the cops the guns, and that Dude, works that's, out. You want me to make make an argument? Uh, this, yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to talk about something different, real quick. You ever watch British TV shows, British cop shows? They're so much fucking better because yeah. the cop doesn't just show up and shoot everybody. <laughs> you they're much brain. more in, they're much more interesting television shows. <laughs> so all I'm saying is that if we ban guns here, TV get better, and the cops don't get to have guns, TV gets a lot better. <laughs> If you won't that's, do that's, it for the children, that's, that's do it for Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> bro, watch, bro, watch a season of Luther. Yeah, and then watch fucking NCIS, and you tell me what show you want on fucking broadcast te network television. Yep. God. Ban guns. That's what we get. If that's if that ain't the best pitch I've heard, <laughs> get a good season of TV out of this, you fucking dickheads. <laughs> Tell me Luther's not better. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Better. Oh, so much better. <laughs> um, and and but, uh, I, I just, like, there's just no way. Oh, motherfuck. Funny bone? No, I have, like, bursitis from punching. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, just punch things. Be regular violent. Don't be gay violent with a gun. <laughs> I just, you know, if you, it, it's, it's reached a point where it's like arguing with a person who's trying to tell you the sky is yellow. Like, there is no more nuance to the argument on, on not understanding. You are talking about, you want regular-ass people to easily be able to get automatic weapons. There just is no... It's like, argue why I shouldn't. And it's like, what do you mean? I shouldn't even have to. I can't even come up with a like a, a, all of the points because it's like telling me, you know, you shouldn't, like... You shouldn't just murder people on sight. You shouldn't you know, you shouldn't just burn down houses. You shouldn't just, you know, run over people with your car. <laughs> These are just things that you should know shouldn't happen. It's it's crazy, man. It's it is like dude, it's a, it honestly is. It's like dude, I remember I remember Sandy Hook. I remember very vividly um because uh we were at work and and Dave was like shut down the blog. Yeah. Like, yeah. This is like like this can't be a day where like people work or like we can't speak to this all right. that kind of shit. Not even speak. It wasn't even about like you didn't want us talking about it. It was just like can't be clowning around about dumb shit when this is going on. But, but just like it, honestly, it, it felt like more than that from him. Where it was just like everyone go home. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is a fucked. national tragedy. Yeah. Everyone go home and like do what you need to do to deal with this. Right. And and that was what seven years ago, say like eight that, years yeah. ago, yep. right? Yep. And, and and now in in those eight years, the change, the only change, has been we care less, right? Like we, we it is we, not it's business as usual. It's not a national event. No, it's not a big deal. And I you mean, know what's the saddest big. part? You know why? I mean, we were better people. We were a smarter company. We also were you know forty five minutes away from that. It was a it was it was Connecticut. It was smack in between the two cities that existed on Barstool and it was a bunch of rich white kids or or you know average middle class upper class white kids. This is a bunch of poor Mexican kids who don't speak English. They are going to get even less attention than anybody else does. And that's the sickest part of it all. I I would love to try to do uh some some sort of fundraising to pay for like funeral costs or counseling or 
I think sometimes when this happens, they like change schools, like if they need a new building or whatever. Like counseling, for, well, that, that's actually something I was going to say too, is that like, you know, I actually, I, was, I unfortunately haven't even learned how to pronounce it. It's Uvade. What's it? Uvalde. 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 Uvalde, Texas. Uvalde. Okay. So like, we'll think about Uvalde for a few days, maybe. Right. And then you'll carry on. That's it. And, but like, we, we think about these things in such a small little box. That town's dead. Done. Like that town's they never. They are been already eaten. so poor, and and marginalized I, I, as I, is. And now and like it, it it kills any town where that's what you're known for. That's what only people. Nobody wants to start a business. No one wants to start a family. Nobody wants. It's just that's it. You are the town where all the kids get sold. It's like a it's like a a, a horror movie. It becomes I, Amityville. You know. I forget why I was driving through Sandy Hook, but I was driving, I was drove through Sandy Hook fairly recently. Let's call it last three, four years. Um, and like, you know, maybe it was just me, you know, I, but like when I crossed into it and I saw the sign, like, welcome to Sandy Hook, there was a different feeling. Yep. Like it was like, it was spooky. It was eerie. It was like, it was like, oh fuck, like, this is that place. This is, and, and like, that's, people don't move there anymore. If anything, people leave, mm -hmm. no one's coming. It is, and obviously it's not a dead town, but it, it is everything about that town. Is this shooting. is now this is now their Big Bang Theory? It this defines is, you. This is where it began. Yep. Yeah, you remember and that that um that uh I don't know if you ended up watching it, but it was a documentary I watched on that. It was like a small, a really small town in the middle of in nowhere America, where they took matters into their own hands. There was this there was one citizen of this town of like four hundred people. It was like comically small. One guy was like a rapist and, and a bully and a murderer, and he always got away with it, and the town just banded together. They fucking killed him. Nobody said a word, and nobody could prove anything, but it it just consumed this town. Nobody could ever move on from it. There was this black cloud of like murder and lies and deceit, and in that case, it was almost honorable what they did. This is, is like that times 20, times 19, uh, in, in in the worst of ways with with the wrong kind of national attention and not the right kind of national attention that's it that that town the people who, who were lucky enough to survive they're fucked those friends those those the families the kids the other teachers it's just you know it absolutely decimates I mean, you, need to, you need to raise the school like you can't you can't just be like back in the same classroom and the same hallways I, I can't believe that they just send kids to school across the country today like, like, I don't feel like school canceled for the week. Like, like, just yeah. like, I can't, I can't imagine being a parent just dropping it. Like, right. Fuck I hope it, it doesn't happen you know, here. You were up all night last night watching news reports and you just got to get up, feed your kid breakfast and fucking right. bring, him, bring him to the slaughter factory, which is an exaggeration, obviously. But, but you know, one, like, all of a sudden the day that it's not, it's, yeah. it's tough, man. And like, and I know, you know, I, I debated it. I was like, should we not do an episode? Should we not talk about it? You know, the company's grown so big and we're not going to do the shut down the website thing. I can, you know, we're already posting about Johnny Depp's trial and all this silly shit. And like, and, and then I, and then I get people being like, you know, well, we need an escape. I fucking hate that. I, I hate, hate the you. escape. First of all, shut the fuck up. It's not like you travel to a different world when you listen to my podcast or something like that. Secondly, we don't deserve to escape this. The whole point is that it should be in your fucking face. And I know this is controversial, and some people don't agree with it, and I don't even know if I fully agree with it, but I think they should cover it differently. And I think they should show the babies. I think they should show their faces. I think you should see some of the gruesome stuff, because otherwise, it allows you to bury your head. Yeah. And I know people think that maybe it's like, oh, the news is exploiting those families, and it's gun porn, and it's wrong, and they're doing it for views and clicks, and unfortunately, some of that is true. But... The second I saw, I don't even know if it was real or not, but the second I saw a little collage of every of pictures of little kids, I'm assuming it was real because you'd be a real asshole to just circulate pictures that aren't those kids. It, I started crying immediately. I, I had a face to it. I looked at, it's like, oh my god, like that looks like my daughter, and that looks like my kid, and they took pictures like that, and it, it hits you harder, and it doesn't allow you to just be like, let me put on my favorite podcast where they're going to talk about dicks, and this isn't happening. You, we don't deserve to escape it. We're the only fucking assholes who who don't fix this because we just continually escape it and pretend it's not happening. So no, you don't get to escape. You got to sit in it. I think you're right with that. So that's my piece on that. I gen I said it before. Uh, if if you 
are against me on this, I say unfollow. Don't buy tickets. Don't listen. Don't buy merch. I don't want you to support me. I don't even want it. If you can't, if you're even, if there's a but, if there's a single but, I'm out on you. You know, you could be a very rational person and even maybe have a rational argument as to why you need a gun. But if it comes at the cost of this, I think you're an asshole. And so, and so again, like just meet us. Like I, I, I'm not a fool to think that we're just gonna poof disappear guns, even though. Every other country has kind of done that. Scotland, Australia, a bunch of other examples. But let's just start with no automatic weapons, no assault rifles, background checks, regular regular checkups, ammo control. I mean, remember, remember Chris Rock's bit about gun control versus bullet control? Like, a lot of these things, let's do them and try that. And then you, the hunters can still hunt. And the average gay ball dad can still maybe have a handgun with a couple bullets that he keeps in a fucking safe. And if you violate, you know, any of the terms, you go to jail for goddamn life or something like that. Start with the gay dads. And <laughs> and they can they can keep doing it. And everybody else needs to stop. And we'll see what happens. Because I, I, I would imagine what's going to happen is what's happened everywhere else. We have the examples. We have the, you know, it's like, oh, man, I wish we just had a crystal ball on how this would work. Uh, <laughs> we do. We did. It's called reality. You fucking pricks. So uh, we're going to do our regular shit here. We'll do some Emma the Asshole. Uh, we'll do some voicemails. We got two interviews with uh, Howie Mandel and Mario Lopez that we already recorded. So we are talking about the silly shit. We are talking about the nonsense. You know, life does have to continue and... I don't know. I don't have the answers, you know, but we're going to do our show anyway. Um, okay. Am I the asshole? Am I the asshole? How about, how about am I the asshole for stealing a ton of valor last night? Oh, <laughs> stolen valor Feidelberg. Dude. One of my favorite Feidelbergs. What happened? I, I went to see, uh, I saw Top Gun Maverick. It's unbelievable. Oh, I can't. There, 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 I can't think of a movie that I know guaranteed was a more can't miss than that movie it's so it's, awesome it's so good it's so good it's i can't wait to see it again thursday um fights but, hurting uh, if dude, you're watching on youtube fights is hurting it looks like he's like swallowing glass every time he talks every single every single swallow dude is like i gotta force it down well you know you are the hero you are really the hero today it's mm, people I should am. be impressed <laughs> but so so cons and i have had plans to go see this movie for two years because it's supposed to come out back in 2020 oh wow and um cons and i like we you know we we like to have we like to be in the theater for for big opening nights yeah for, for action um so he calls me like sunday and he's like i got bad news because we already had tickets for thursday so you got bad news um i i got invited to a, sc a private screening of Top Gun Maverick on the USS Intrepid, um, which if, if people actually, don't know, the Intrepid is a uh, like an aircraft carrier or a, like a, a battleship, aircraft. yeah, aircraft carrier on yeah. the side uh, on the west side of Manhattan in the Hudson River that is just permanently docked there. That's almost like a little museum. You can go and like view it as a tourist. It's fucking sick. They've got the so stealth bombers and fighter planes on the deck, and to so to to have a movie premiere on that is for a obviously a fighter jet movie is fucking sick. Dude, it was so sick. But the but when he's calling me, he's like, actually, you know what? Like, let me see if I can get you in. So he talks to someone who talks to someone, gets me on the list, and and then I'm like. I'm I'm getting drinks with 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 chaps. <coughs> I'm getting drinks with chaps, cons, and Kate beforehand, and that's what like, if I for the first Finally time hit you me. like one I'm of like, these like, things is not like, like the other. Wait, should I be going to this? And they're like, <laughs> they're like yeah, yeah, there'll be tons of civilians there uh, or whatever. Like, we're non-military there because um, I think they're all civilians now at this point. Um, and I was like, okay. Are you okay? I'm gonna I'm gonna trust you on this one. All right, I'll fucking give it a shot, dude. There were five people there, not in full uniform. <laughs> Three of them were Chaps, Cons, and Kate. So they <laughs> said the other guy was a photographer. Like everyone <laughs> was in full fucking. The fact like, it's pretty like, rare when you can 
absolutely single out. Like you, you might have a hunch, you might have a pretty good inclination, you might even and you might even be right with your guess. But when you absolutely can zero in and narrow down that you are the number one asshole at an event, <laughs> that's, that's special. That's special. I was like, I was like, oh, you guys are all. You're active. You're, <laughs> you guys. Like, you guys all like do this top cut right, shit for is, a living. Okay. This is this is active military. What were you here. wearing? Uh, <laughs> oh boy. I was wearing I was wearing this t-shirt, okay. uh, a pair of jeans, but I'm gonna show you something because we I, we couldn't figure out where it was gonna be. Uh huh. Like where the screen was gonna be. It turns out that there is a. Uh, that there is a theater on board, so that it was just at the regular theater. Got it. But we thought, like, we thought maybe there was going to be like a setup outside. On That's the what deck. I thought. Yeah, like an inflatable yeah. movie screen, and yeah, and like, and it was going to be there, and uh, and it was going to be um, a little breezy because you know you're on the water. Sure, uh, sure. So you, you had to dress so, warm with this jacket, huh? So in case of a breeze, I did bring a sweater which I wore like this. Oh no! No! Yes. If you're not watching, stop listening. Go over to the YouTube. John wore his sweater tied around his neck like a tennis pro at the country club, named like, "Hi, I'm Trip Wentworth the Third. Nice to meet you. My dad owns this place. You look like a colossal asshole." Dude, everyone else is in full uniform. <laughs> And I was wearing this. Like the stereotype look, like the cartoon <laughs> character look for when you're trying to make a, a white asshole. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, I mean, that's it. You did it, baby. I, I, I look like a guy whose dad voted to send them over yeah. but wasn't letting me go. <laughs> <laughs> what a what a colossal asshole you are you didn't think to just maybe you know put it on or hold it or you just kept it over the shoulders huh it never occurred to me really yeah no, no. it was because i'll be honest i like the look <laughs> <laughs> like i'll be honest i thought i looked good. i was getting this yeah, fit off man i was throwing fits bro i'm sorry <laughs> i'm fine with it but you know what was what was a strange experience of it was that like i feel like like when when regular people when civilians go see a movie like this they're more hoorah yeah than like the soldiers sure and, and so like there wasn't a bunch of like woo like, i thought it was gonna be like screaming and shit like that there wasn't at all really well that's because they were all like you know active service men and women who like respect it and don't you know glorify it and turn it into an action movie like the assholes would like the yeah. assholes with the sweaters around their neck it would, dude, it was even at one point someone someone was giving a speech beforehand, and and said like, you know, we thank you guys, you're our heroes, blah blah blah. And someone would kind of say, bullshit. <laughs> I love it exactly. Like we're not here for like, this nonsense. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, there was no, uh, there was no like none of the stars or anything, right? No, 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 no. But the movie's a plus. As good as it gets. Yeah, as good as it gets. Miles Teller kill dude. it. It's crazy. Like they look. It's because they're really in the plane. Yeah. So well, Tom, face, like, Tom Cruise is. Are the other guys? They all. They all did it too. I think they're all in the planes. Yeah. I think. I think the rumor with Cruise was that he flew. Like that he like learned how to do it. And yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, but yeah they're all doing the like the G force. Like, dude, I can't even melting faces. I was at the doctor the other day with Keegan, and he he sat. I sat down on the doctor's little uh, stool that spins and he spun me around like three times and i was like whoa bro i'm, I'm a little i'm a little nauseous <laughs> being on in a fighter pilot uh, being a fighter pilot being in a, in a jet with i mean the gravity the g-force your face you're flipping upside i'd be puking everywhere dude yeah oh yeah these guys are it's, impre it's an impressive thing to pull off i mean tom cruise he's a s absolute psychopathic asshole but you got to give the guy credit he goes balls to the wall on every fucking roll he's the like if you don't appreciate Tom Cruise, appreciate Tom Cruise. You're never getting another Tom, another Tom Cruise. He is a fucking movie star. Now again, he might, you know, way. he might endorse and condone like, you know, cloak and dagger life ruining practices by a, a cult. But you know what? Like, I, I, I think I might have, I think we might have had this conversation once before. But like, or maybe he said it or something. I'm having a little bit of deja vu. But if there's ever a movie, if there's ever a chance. To do like an astronaut movie where they're actually in space, he'll go. Oh yeah! Like if, he, yeah. if Elon and SpaceX and like privatized 
space travel becomes enough that like Hollywood's like, we could actually do this scene from outer space, Tom Cruise will turn into a, an astronaut. He'll do it. He'll be, he'll be the first one to go. 100%. He's, you know, he, he is a gangster, man. It's like separate the art from the artist or whatever. They separate the Scientology. He might be more dedicated and better to his craft than anybody. Like he's the Kobe. Is Scientology, of this is how good this movie, that movie has me talking. Is Scientology even that bad? <laughs> you know, got a little heat, a little bit of heat for that recently. Our boy Bill Burr. He was like, you know, he goes, he said something like, a couple dead bodies and a couple bent out of shape '90s sitcom actors. Is it really that bad? Like, dude, you want you want you want to do a body count? Scientology versus fucking Christianity. Oh well, yeah, yeah, you you're right. Of the cleaners every day. You, you're right on that one for sure. <laughs> one like, like one afternoon in the Crusades. Would, dude, I'm would not even, I'm, we can, bro, we can do it. We can probably start from the inception of Scientology. We don't have to bring the Crusades yeah, in. Yeah, just do like I, '90s till today. I, I bet we got you guys beat still. No, you're right. That, that's that, that's like, a fact. But I do like so. Leah Remini uh, tweeted it like at at Bill Burr and was like, "Hey, Bill, give me a call. Like, I'll let you know." And I think her whole thing is when you know the extent of what they do and how they do it, and it's basically like a real life Handmaid's Tale. But I can understand the take of uh, you know, so many bodies, so many bodies. Has but she, yeah, has she, has she seen Top Gun Maverick? Yet? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I, you know, I, I say it's like you know, weigh the things of the arguments. You know, it's like the gun control versus the good and the pros and the cons. And it's like Scientology cult, a lot of shady shit created. You know, Top Gun Maverick. These are mm -hmm. the, you got to break a few eggs. I saw I saw someone tweet. Tom Cruise is definitely my favorite actor, but Tom Cruise is definitely my favorite actor who knows where Shelby Miscavige's body body is. <laughs> 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 it is funny to think about like when he did that, that. Miss Cavage, Miss Cavage. I know what you're talking about, but yeah. the the uh I I love the like you think about him when he his famous like rant when he went on Oprah and he stood on the couch and said how much he loves Katie Holmes and his 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 uh behind the scenes like yelling at the crew and like just all the that things was sick, though that was cool like that he's the, he was the good guy though. well yeah that's when he was like i'm taking this shit professional like serious yeah, and you he's, should he's too like, he's like, we have the industry yeah. on our back yeah. you can't wear a fucking mask he's like he was no that was, was cool he was like the hero in that in that rant but when you think about you know his silly things and then now we you know it's like he also uh you know kept katie holmes hostage for about a decade and uh you know, thinks that he's an alien and, and uh, thinks he's going to live for a billion years. It's pretty wild. It's, it's pretty wild to be like, that guy's awesome. But if I were to have a beer with him, he would tell me, like, I'm going to live to a billion. <laughs> but, but dude, like, like, again, like, I got to ride in defense Scientology here. Like, how, how much, how is that crazier than the guy yeah. who you know, having a beer with him? He's like, no, genuinely, when I die, I'm going to paradise. Yeah. No. And, and, and you're like, what? Yeah. That's why is that crazier? It's not that much it's crazier. Not, it's not. It's really not, man. It's not. I, I actually, you know, I, I um, I'm not being Scientologist. I, <laughs> I, it's better. It's 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 at least equal to me being a Christian. So right, like like I mean, aren't aren't there Scientologists who are just like like me? We're normal. Like a Catholic? Yeah, it's not like everybody's a radicalized but, cult member, right? Right, or or is or it? are they? Yeah, yeah, it might be. I know that um Elizabeth Elizabeth. Shoo? No, Elizabeth. Whatever. The girl from... It's funny because she plays Handmaid's Tale. Oh, uh, Elizabeth Moss. No. Moss? Yeah, Elizabeth Moss. She does... She's the star of Handmaid's Tale, which is like a dystopian future based on like a cult-like religion and government. And she then is a part of Scientology, which I didn't really learn that until recently. That's like Chris D'Elia playing all those fucking pedophiles. It's like, <laughs> wait a second. What's going on here? She got up and left the room when... um. She says she swears she up and to down. to go to the bathroom. Suck my dick. Right. But she was. She's like, I'm very open about it. I'm willing to have a conversation with anybody also, about it. But it's like that's uh, that's some fucking Roger Goodell shit. I'm available to media. Yeah, no, day. you're fucking not. Like, are you? Yeah. Really? Like, come on. Come on, KFC Radio, Elizabeth. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Show, show me the quote where you've ever talked about it. Yeah. What are you talking about? You're open about it. You're not. But like, it would be it be interesting if some if if someone was like the same way that I'd be like, well, yeah, listen. Some priests like rape boys, but some of them are good people. Like, uh, you know, are are there levels to that in Scientology, or is it just like, no, we're all we're all part of this alien cult? I think I'm actually genuinely done with Catholicism. 
Genuinely, yeah. yeah. Like when 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 Shay came home from school asking me about why Jesus was hammered to a cross, I was like, uh yeah, no no no. I'm officially done with this. Like one of the very first things I'm gonna do when I get my money is talk to their mom about like paying for them to go to a Bronxville public school, but because we don't live in this within the lines, we'd have to pay for it. I'm done. I, I think I'm legit done with that. It's like I have a seven year old coming home asking me about nailing people to wood. That's uh -huh. psychotic, folks. If you're an adult and her and God bless her teacher, like they, they're a great school otherwise, but like you sat in front of a room full of six and seven year olds and said how he was nailed to the cross. You're psychotic. Just talk to him about like be a good person, turn the other yeah. cheek, do one to others as you would do. A All that's fine. Don't go. Don't have my kid coming home talking to me about nailing to the wood. That's fucking psychotic, and it was kind of my breaking point, which is crazy because it's not, you know, it wasn't the rape and it wasn't all this other shit that I don't condone. But it finally, much like we said about the shootings, like it's finally affecting me and my life in a way that I was like, nope, 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 not doing this anymore. Fuck that. This is weird. So, fuck Catholicism. We're anti-Catholicism, <laughs> anti-Constitution. We're pro-feminist, pro-masculine, mas pro-Scientology. Pro Pro-Scientology. <laughs> all right, let's do... Uh, uh, voicemails. They are brought to you by Shady Ray Sunglasses, the best in the industry when it comes to fit and style and performance without the big brand price tag. Uh, it doesn't just stop at the quality. Uh, they have the most insane protection program out of all of the eyewear because every pair is backed by lost and broken replacements. That means if you lose it or you break it, even if like the, the first day you buy it, the first second you buy it, you break it or lose it, they will send you a new pair. Wear it, doing whatever you want. Extreme sports, fucking water skiing, swim with them, run with them, wrestle with them. If they break or they get lost, they will send you a new pair, no questions asked. They're also pretty stylish. They've got everything from just regular, like, black shades that the average guy, average dad like me wants to wear, all the way down to some of the, you know, brighter colors and clear frames and different lenses and different shapes and styles. So they got you covered. Uh, and the best thing is when I did the Shady Rays, you do promo code KFC or you do um, the URL is ShadyRays.com slash KFC and it cuts everything in half. You get 50% off for two pairs. So when you see like you put one in your cart and it says like $100 and then you put in promo code KFC, it gets cut down to 50 and you get two pairs. It's like it feels like it's Christmas morning. So go to ShadyRays.com slash KFC, get 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. The very best deal of the season. ShadyRays.com slash KFC. Hello, guys. So, real quick. Just listen to Tuesday's, Tuesday's episode. And, yes, Nova Moraine is my number one choice. Right on point with that. But also, let's talk about another very hot video. Crazy by Aerosmith. Yeah, I know now as an adult, it's kind of creepy knowing that your teenage daughter is in the video. But at the end of the video, there's this half-naked guy. Mm. Like, he could have gotten it back in the day. Like, he was, I would watch this video over and over again. Well, come to find out, being from New Orleans, that guy got arrested down here for uh, raping college students. And I'm like, oh, shit, that took a turn. And I was also thinking horribly, like, oh, damn, that was me. I wouldn't have called it rape. But okay. <coughs> yeah, that took a turn. But, so is there anybody out there that, you know, you might have idolized that didn't really turn out the way that you planned? I'm going to cut her off there before there's a but. Um... By the way, I actually, I think I, I had a fifth pick of the, oh, this this all happened at the live show, right? So these people don't even know what we're talking about. Well, well, oh, like no, 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 wait, wait, hang on, hang on. We did, uh, it was when we did music video draft. We did that on, on the podcast, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I actually skipped my fifth pick because she said her video was crazy by Aerosmith. And it's kind of weird because Liv Tyler is in the video and... She was being sexy and weird, and it's it's Steven Tyler's daughter. Um, but I was going to pick Crying for my music video. I think I had a fifth pick that I never picked. Alicia Silverstone, she's in both. She was in Crying, and then she was in Crazy. But when Alicia Silverstone jumps off. Crazy? Crazy is, uh, I'd go crazy, crazy, crazy for you, baby. Okay. Na, na, na. It's like kind of like Crying Part 2. They like ran yeah. it back for the next album. Um and they brought Alicia Silverstone back, and she ends up... I think it's like a Thelma and Louise type video with her and Liv Tyler. But Alicia Silverstone and Crying. Crying is a dope song. And when she jumps off the overpass 
and she has a rope tied to her. She gives the finger. It was fucking wacky shit going on in the 90s. But anyway, her her question was, she said there was a guy in the in the video that she was like, this guy's super hot, and he ended up being a horrible, horrible sex offender. So are there anybody that you idolized growing up or thought was cool or hot that it didn't quite turn out the way he thought it would? Did she mention Nuva Ring to start the podcast? Yes, she did. She she hit all she hit she hit it all. She said, I'm one of those girls who has the Nuva Ring and I'm happy about it. I'm cheering for it. Okay, so that was the live show. That was the yeah, that's why I got confused. We did do we did talk about birth control and there was a a few hoots and hollers from the crowd when we mentioned Nuva Ring. The same way that it was like, Hey, are there any Mets fans out there? Like, yeah. It was like, How about girls with their Nuva Ring? And they were like, Yeah, that's me. I've got that little wishbone piece of plastic in my pussy. Yeah. Still don't even understand how it uh, you're not you're not a Nuva Ring girl, are you? That's you're talking about I IUD. Oh, I thought that's what Nuva Ring was. No, I think that's when like Oh, yeah, it would make like sense that kind of ring Nuva there, Ring would be yeah, a ring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That probably just what? Just put a little ring around your fucking tubes so the cum doesn't get in there? I don't know. Yeah, it's like it's like a hose. You just kind of pinch it. Exactly. Put a little kink in it. Do you have an IUD? I have an idea. And that's the plastic thingy. And that's the plat. Yeah, yeah. There's, I mean, there's hormones in it, but like, there, it's like the little T. So is it is it something like you put in your body that puts hormones out and that's how it works or it physically the plastic like physically there's does like something. multiple kinds and there's but like the the there's one it's like the copper iud and that one's just like physically placed but it is like so bad like i had it this is tmi but like and then they inserted it wrong and it yeah. was like they like and i was like bleeding it was yeah so yeah bad. that's why i, I so you're like, i'm so surprised that chicks are like all about the iud because i feel like when you put foreign objects in your body if it doesn't go right and it's dirty or put in wrong or whatever, I also just don't understand. This is probably something I could easily Google, but it's like that little wishbone looks at like the flux capacitor and somehow that stops the cum. What? I don't get it. I'm like, I'm a fan of the fucking pill. Give me the medicine you put in your body and it puts all the medicine into your blood and your pussy and stops the babies. That's what I like. I'm a sponge guy. Just, sponge. I would, I would maybe do a patch too. I trust the patch. Dude, by the way, you're talking about Steven Tyler. I saw an article today about um, what do you think Steven Tyler spent on cocaine in his life? Oh, what a great question. He's a guy, by the way. He kind of disappeared. Oh no, wait, never mind. He was a he was a he was a guest. Uh, he was a, a judge on that show, right? I think he's an American Idol judge. Yeah, because I was gonna say he he disappeared, and it's probably because he did weird things. But no, uh, in his lifetime, I mean, I I have to say like. Six figure, like a million dollars. <laughs> six million. Six million dollars. <laughs> How do you even know that? Did he just say I, like I, he probably just said like ah, I used to spend X Y Z a year for twenty years, so that adds up to six million. Let me see if I can. Uh, I'll see what exact his exact quote was. Um, six milli. But you know what? It's like I don't know how much have you spent on booze and weed and drugs. It's like everybody spends the money, like the majority of their money, on food, clothes, and drugs. Yeah. You got to be a big baller to have a six million dollar with nothing to show for it expense. You know, you get nothing but a good time and a bad hangover, and and you're at the end of the day, you're like, that's okay. I spent six million on it, and I am like happy to tell you that. That's because I made you know a hundred million or whatever he did. I don't know. That is. Dude, this is weird. This article isn't even about this. But that was the headline, and then. It's just like like the New York Post is just using that as clickbait. Like the article. You're, you're telling me that a headline didn't. It, it was a misleading. Uh, Dude, misleading I just I just article? search. I just like control F million. It's in the article once. It's the last sentence, and uh, oh sorry, it's, in the, it's the last sentence of the second last paragraph. Oh by the way, he did it six six million dollars. That's it. Like put it in the. So article. Tyler once estimated that he'd blown six million on cocaine in his lifetime. So I click that link. It's that's from 2013. He said this. I mean. You know that's that's how like not shocking that news was. <laughs> it's like, it, it, oh, so in, in, an, in an interview on the Australian sixty Minutes, Liz Hayes asked Aeros Aerosmith frontman Steven Tyler if it was true he'd spent upwards of twenty million dollars on cocaine. No, probably realistically five or six. I, I love that being like, come I, seriously, lady, you think I spent twenty million dollars on cocaine? It was six. It's like, yeah. dude, anything above like you know several hundred thousand dollars is probably too much, man. <laughs> it says, but it doesn't matter. You could you could also just say I've snorted half of Peru. It's what we did. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, it's what they fucking did, dude. Uh, he, they, by we, he was referring to Joe Perry, a fellow band member guitarist. The friends known as the Toxic Twins. I didn't know that. That's a fire. That name. is cool. That's Minka Kelly's dad, right? Or no, the other guy. No, the other, no, the other dude he, is Minka Kelly's dad. Uh, he so Joe uh, Perry was the guitarist of Aerosmith, but like there was a high, he went on a hiatus or something like that. The like, there was the another guitarist right? for a little while. Yeah. That's Mickey yeah, that's Kelly's dad. Um, do you have anybody who you like? I mean, a, a lot of the the child actors, you know, it's like you you know you like them until you don't, um, or until they. There's definitely I'm trying to think of it, but I I, I, I can remember being Steven Tyler would be one. What? Probably Steven Tyler would be one. <laughs> he hadn't done anything bad. No, he just grew up yeah, to become he, a I just a I human scarecrow. Funny, and I'm and I'm I'm, I'm under I'm under impressed. If we impressed. if we if Steven Tyler was doing his thing now instead of back then, we 100% would have said he was a trans a trans person. Yeah, but dude, it's weird. All It feels like all the the people who get the most worked up about uh, you know, transgender stuff or, or bathrooms or whatever the fuck, I don't know. Yeah. Um, the, the, like, if you look back at, at who their favorite bands were, you're yeah. going to see that they were... Yeah. So you liked a lot of guys dressed up in tight flowing. Oh, big time. Tight, tight but also flowing clothes. You had like like ribbons and and scarves and long hair and yeah. big lips and no dick. Very and vocal jeans now about how men, high heels. men used to be men. Right. And oh, dude, be, I saw the funniest on satisfaction. I saw this funny this fucking meme, and I know it was meant to be real, and a lot of it is, but it has the quote. It says, um, "I just wish we could go back to a simpler time." Like the, uh, I wish America would go back to the '50s when things were simple. And it's got a mom, a dad, and some kids and a grandpa in a Norman Rockwell painting. But then it has the like uh, the meme like words written on it to like what they're actually going through in their life to be like it basically being like it wasn't that hard and yeah, yeah. it wasn't that fun in the '50s. And 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 most of them are are like yeah, this is heartbreaking. But so like the 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 young son, it says I have polio. The dad, it says, I'm secretly gay. The mother, it says, I can't get through the day without a shit ton of drugs. The The grandfather, it says, I beat this shit out of my son and molested my daughter and no one will ever do a goddamn thing about it. So the, some heavy shit, right? But then it, <laughs> then it goes to like the daughter who's like a young, like, you know, 13 year old girl. And it says, I'm not allowed to wear pants or go to college. <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, yeah. One of these things is not quite like the other on that one. But uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's always that way. The people who are the most outspoken are the biggest assholes. I'm trying to think. I, I definitely know that there was there was some guys who I like, you know, thought were funny or cool or were a bit character, and then it was like, oh no, 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 we don't talk about him anymore. But I can't remember it. But there's a shit ton of people who ended up being bad people, you know. Yeah, yeah, or, or the, burnouts uh, or drug addicts or whatever. But you know, I don't, yeah. I don't care about like if you. I was fell a huge hard time guy for a yeah. while. <laughs> hey, that, yeah, that B- Bill great. Cosby was one that I, uh, you know, <laughs> can you believe Bill Cosby's out? It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I was good about that. You know what's a really crazy one? Ricky Gervais talks about the Liam Neeson stuff. Whew, that was a crazy one. That was that was a wild one. That was a wild was trip. Nuts. Ricky was like, I don't know why he told it. But yeah, <laughs> I actually I, I did the one minute man. Like, on, like, on, I went uh, looking for a black person to kill. It's like bloody, <laughs> and the interviewer that was almost like a Donald Sterling thing. The interviewer was like, "I asked you if it was going to be a Taken Four, sir." <laughs> uh, I did like Ricky's trans stuff when he said, "You know, regular, you know, original women with a womb, those fucking dinosaurs." That delivery <laughs> absolutely killed me, man. I find that special is very funny. Yeah, I watched like half. Of I it liked it. I thought it was. I thought it was very funny. It's 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 not preachy. Like he does break it down and talk a little bit about cancel culture, but he does it in a very basic way. And the rest I just found very funny. It's been a little while since we've had like a home run comedy special, and I don't know if I'm even ready to give him that. But it was it, that was that was money. Uh, all right, let's get back to the voicemails. KFC fights gang. I'm listening to the episode right now where Jackie's following the cherry blood. I literally watched an episode of Always Sunny last night, the 1920s black and white, where they're doing the ch- the cherry blood mix-up ordeal, and I feel like life is a simulation. Jackie's living that. Question: Who out of the KFC bunch 
would make the best reality show if you just followed them with a camera all the time. Two best candidates are Fights and Jackie. But then there's the KFC dad angle and just seeing the chaos I mean, it's fight of you trying to be a dad. So, What's the question? Uh, what, what members of the KFC radio gang would make the best reality show? It's it's. Uh, you. I'll tell you what, DJ Zach might make a run though. Like Zach has some deep dark, uh, deep dark nights out there where he's in a in a mesh shirt in the in like the gay clubs <laughs> of New York City where he probably sees some things that we would never encounter. Um, Jackie, you know, Jackie's not a, a real person. She's not a girl. She's not even a human. She's just a she's just a character from the simulation at this point. I almost want the reality show of her to come out so that she realizes she's not normal. <laughs> Jackie's like I'm in the room you yeah. know that, right? uh, it, it, but like you know if I can speak for Jackie we, we're we aware of our lack of normalcy I don't right? think she, she they just walked out they have a meeting I don't think Jackie is yet yet I think she's still young I think she's still surrounded by a lot of other people who are weird and crazy and when you're a young dumb kid and you're blacked out and you're weird and you say your silly shit and you have your crazy beliefs and it's like the mean girls pod talking about like robbing guys like when you're that young and you're surrounded by, you're you're young and dumb and surrounded by young dumb people i don't know if she knows she's crazy yet because every time we say something she's like oh, oh, what and it's like yeah it's weird that you followed a blood trail around manhattan and she's like oh yeah i guess you're right i guess you're right i i i get weird with it with my thing where i'm like i understand i'm abnormal but I don't get why I am because I think everything I do is the it's, most it's normal. Yeah. So it's like yeah. you 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 acknowledge that nobody else really does this, but you don't know why. It's, but I think they're wrong. Yeah. Like, yeah, I do. I do. The, yeah, I think I'm right. I, I know I'm in the minority. I know I'm, I'm the rarity, but I think I'm the one doing it. right. Yeah, that's uh, that's called denial, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Last voicemail brought Wait, to what, you by. What no was this? Oh, so, oh, like, so yeah, like, the reality show. Yeah. We have to live together. No, I don't think you know. It's, oh. not, it's not like the Kardashians all live together and stuff. That you know, the cameras bounce what's, around. What's this pervert saying? We gotta sleep together. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? I think it would be like if, if we did a if we did oh, a show. Whoa, whoa, dude, dude, hang on. This guy's trying to pitch us on a reality show where me and Jackie hook up. Get out of here. <laughs> If you did have a show that bounced around, no one, no one, no one ever called him. <laughs> you sick perverts, get your ideas cleaned up. Don't you ever call up with that again. If you had a show that bounced around from John's life to Jackie's life, and then like me with the kids and Nick like doing karaoke by himself late at night, and then Paz, Paz just being like a dumb. Dumb boy who like uh, I don't know, me and my friends drank a thousand beers today. I think it would be it's a pretty balanced show. Yeah. I, I mean I there's there's so many times where I wish I had a camera on for more of just like funny shit with my kids and like wholesome shit, and then you would get the the weird shit from YouTube, the party stuff from Pavs, the unique like like hipster shit from Nick. We're a pretty balanced squad. We are a very balanced squad, yeah. Alright, last voicemail brought to you by last voicemail. What's up? KFC fights, Jackie, Nick, whole gang. Um, I had a podcast related question. So me and my friend recently started doing one and we've been getting interviews on our podcast. Kind of like how you guys do it. We, we talk and then there's an interview. And um, I noticed recently some of, some of our guests, not all of them, but some, they just ramble on and on and on. And like, obviously, you want your guests to talk it's good and all but like sometimes i'm listening back when i you know clean up the podcast edit it whatever and i'm like this is gonna run half an hour longer than i really want it to and this person's not even talking about anything interesting so when that happens i've i've like cut the small story they told and just like moved on with the podcast but um my question for you is does that ever happen to you guys? Do, have you ever had guests that kind of just wouldn't shut up? Or do you typically just run the whole thing? Maybe this is a Nick-related question. Like, you ever cut stuff from interviews or...
Oh, the irony of this question being too long-winded and running long. That was crazy. He, yeah, I that mean, was crazy. He's driving his car. You can't see it. He's driving. He's looking both ways. He's like, you know, it's like, bro, you could have just said, I have a podcast. I have long-winded interviews sometimes. Do you guys ever go through that? Done. Under 10 seconds. So, yeah, we sometimes have long-winded voicemails, too. Um, we've definitely have had some guests. I think at this point, we are, like, we're good enough at this that we kind of control the interviews and we know when to wrap it up and we know when to, you know, here's the thing. I know a lot, of, there's a lot of people who don't like me who a lot of times say that I, I cut people off or I speak up or I talk too much. And a lot of times I'm doing that for the fucking sake of the podcast and for the own, for the guest's own good. Sometimes it's like, you know, pipe down. That's enough. Uh, and there's other times where, you know, you, you, you need to like steer the conversation away or you're, you know, it, it, there's a lot of things I think interview wise that. If you were in the room and you felt, you know, some of the awkwardness or you saw some of the faces, you'd understand a lot more why sometimes interviews go the way they do. I think for the most part, we we have like great guests. There's, it's very rare that I'm like, that was a dud, that stunk, or like, hey, buddy, I, I, shut the <laughs> fuck up. But um, it's happened here and there. For sure. I, I, I agree with that. But also, like, I mean, the other thing with guests – an interview an interview is it's just a microcosm of conversation as a whole and guess what most conversations are pretty pointless and don't have to happen yeah yeah <laughs> like, right like you're, just, you're just doing it for that one in a hundred where like something crazy interesting happens most of the time like it's conversation and it's perfectly pleasant it's actually kind of crazy if you think about but, it like, that we do like it's pretty much minimum like 30 minutes now right if you were to tell me like you're at you're at work go walk down the the hallway. Uh, you see Jeff D. Lowe there? Go have a 30-minute conversation with him right now. <laughs> That's crazy, right? Yeah. Right. And, and, you know, these people come with stories and they come with a reason and, and something to talk about. But, you know, it's it's hard to be interesting and intriguing while also being, you know, sh you know quick and, and, and brevity and, and interest and unique and all that. Um I'm trying to think if there's one that really stood out. Like, it's very rare that we'll have one where, not very rare, but pretty rare that you know the person will leave and we'll be like, "Whoa, buddy." I mean, it's it, it, I I don't like saying because he's an incredibly nice guy. Interviewing Bob Saget wasn't very fun. Saget would just say, "Was go." Saget would just ramp. Go back and listen to Bob Saget interviews. We we both say three words the whole time. Uh huh. Just, but it just, but it had a charm because it's Bob. <laughs> But if other people did that to us, it would have been like, "What is going yeah. on here?" I think I think the first time he did, it, I was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. But then like like I we talked like I I DM'd with him and like he, like was a very nice guy. And the fact like, that he was fuck. so maybe it's because we let him do that and say his piece, but he was always like, "This was great, guys." And I was like, yeah. "What? Okay, was it? Because you just you know you just ran with it, um, you know." And then, and then there's there's always a few that are just like my my main thing is if you're going to be a guest on a podcast come with like come with some energy maybe yeah. like one pre-planned story like i'm going to tell you guys my funniest story that happened to me and, and and wedge it into the show if you have to but like sometimes people come on and even it could be like comics and other people in the business and they're just like what's up man how you doing and we just have like a regular conversation it's like you're fine to like talk to at a bar but to be, but to, this was a form of entertainment that you expect people to want to listen to. Uh, okay, man, you know, and that's podcasts are just kind of conversating. But at the same time, it's like you expect people to really care about that. I don't know about that one, man. But but the two guests we have today are neither of those. Uh, we got Howie Mandel, who basically performs like a stand-up routine for us. I, when I found out he was the voice, uh, I don't even want to blow it for you. He is the voice of a very popular 80s movie character that I didn't know about that for the 80s baby in me and the 90s kid made made my dick hard. I'll just say it. So we got Howie Mandel, and after him, we've got uh, Mario Lopez, who I think is low-key creeping up to the top of my list of people I would trade lives with right now. You know, not many people would be like, who do I want to be? Mario Lopez. Like, it's, you think about movie stars and you think about, like, sex icons and fighters and athletes. And it's like, look at what Mario Lopez has done his entire life. The people he rolled with, the life he's had, the money he makes, the job he does, how well he does it, how easy it is for him, and, and some of the stories that he alludes to in this interview. 
Not a bad life for your boy, Mario. So we'll talk to him now. It's Howie Mandel and then Mario Lopez on KFC Radio. Brought to you by absolutely nobody because today only had two ads instead of one. One up from last time, guys. Yeah, double, double the last episode. Crack job by the fucking sales team. Uh, so I, I'll use this time to tell you to go get tickets. We only have uh, about 143, I believe, was the number of tickets available in Chicago. That was like a 750-person theater. We're like at six-something. So uh, if you want your tickets to Chicago, buy them now. It's uh, July. It's for June like 19th or something like that. I want to say 18th. Or 18th. Something like that. So that's, that's going to sell out very quickly. Um, and then from there... We got. Uh, we're gonna try to do DC. It, nothing's official yet, but we're gonna try to do DC the same weekend as the Pup Punk Music Festival with OAR and Alanis Morissette and uh, Dave Matthews and all all those like all those bands. Uh, so Thursday, the 29th of September, will probably be DC, and then I'm tentatively gonna say the rest of the year. My thoughts would be. Denver, L.A., Phoenix, Dallas, come back east for a Providence finish off in New York. That sounds dope. I think that would be my plan. And what we'll do is usually we do one show per month, but on the West Coast swing, we'll try to do it like we have, we'll have to do like three in a week because there's no way we're going to go back and forth, back and forth. So we'll right. do a little KFC Radio West tour. We'll hit Dallas, go down to L.A., over to Phoenix. Uh, sorry, Denver. Down to L.A., over to Phoenix, up to Dallas, or, or sideways to Dallas, or whatever the fuck, and then back east. So that's the tentative plan. If you're any of those cities, that sounds very sick. Yeah, I, I, I want to. You know, we, we looked at our our demos of where the people are, and those are our our most active uh, downloads and listens. And uh, but I, I, I personally wanted to hit Denver. I was like, I, I got, I want to go see Denver. I think Denver is cool. So um, and they're at the top of the list as well. But I was, that was the one that I was like, we're doing that one for sure. Um, so. If you're happy about that, you live in those cities, let us know. If you really want to make a run and a push for other cities that you think we really should be there, uh, tell us why. But that's probably going to be the the list of KFC Radio Live throughout the rest of the year for this tour. So so mm -hmm. anyway, but um, I, I got locked away because I didn't want to go near my wife. Well, my wife didn't want me near her. And then like for like 10 days, I was in a room by myself, which is not a good thing. Mm -hmm. I don't like being by myself mm -hmm. anywhere. Mm -hmm. I don't like eating alone. I don't like quiet. I don't like, I need distraction. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, for 10 days, nothing but fucking me. Mm -hmm. And it's, mm -hmm. a, a, nobody was fucking me. I was fucking myself. <laughs> I was fucking myself in my head. And you know, like, I mean, the, the highlight of the day is opening the door to the room. My wife would leave it like a cookie. Uh, yeah. You're in prison, man. It's I have like, a cookie. Slide it under the yeah, door. I went nuts. I went to the deepest, darkest I've been in like you, a you decade. You live out in, in California, right? Yeah. Couldn't you just kind of hang out in the, in the backyard? Just like get I went there outside and, and I, I went outside. I did. Uh, I was trying things. I didn't go because I didn't want to pass her. So there's a little balcony in the room. Mm -hmm. So I sat out sometimes. I, I sat on the balcony by myself. So it was just like being in the room, but brighter. It wasn't, it wasn't. I played hide and go seek alone. I did that. Once did, I was did, it. Did you watch a lot of TV? Every, every fucking thing. Every show. Okay, every, see that? Every, yeah. I, I liked, I, I was, when I was like locked away, I actually, I got it. I, I, I hosted a super spreader event. I, uh, <laughs> Is that what it said on the invitation? <laughs> it was, I, I had to go on like vacation with all my friends every winter and I got tested right before I went. But then I guess I, it was a I tested negative, and then the next day I went, I showed up, and I just gave everyone COVID. But at first we thought Man, I had women, a, children. We thought I time. hadn't intermingled enough. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. There were babies there. Everyone. And um, <laughs> licked you licked. Yeah, yeah. Babies. It was just like kissing them was crazy. They okay. didn't like it was nuts. But the uh, but the I just said so they just locked me in my room and I watched everything and it was unbelievable glorious right I could, yeah I, I usually don't like being alone with myself which I well I'm the with truth you on of that, the matter but. is I you know I like noise I don't like quiet the TV is on 24 7 in my house I watch mm -hmm. everything it doesn't even have to be English yeah. for me to watch it so watching wait, whoa, TV whoa, whoa, wait. what what was that what was what you, you watch there are subtitles no 
Mm. I just I love when the, the do thing you know about the it, other languages. <laughs> no. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were just what, gonna try and slide that in that you shows <laughs> that you don't know what's going on in them. That's what I, I find that fascinating. Everything becomes a game show to me. It's like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> How we is been, this no, this is one of the game? craziest things I've ever heard in my really? life. <laughs> Season four of the show. I mean, no if, idea if you had on. the subtitles on, yeah, I get that. I like to try to figure out what's going on. I'm just fascinated by anybody that's standing in front of a camera and saying anything. I sometimes don't even. I don't. I'm not aware of what language it is yeah. <laughs> you know but yeah. I, I swear to you and I will spend my wife will walk in the room to, and and say is this still fucking on <laughs> like haven't you and Even I go I, I haven't figured out what it is <laughs> she's like put on the subtitles yeah, it'll be the American no. version you idiot I don't want to read is. I said I like to watch <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you need point. to you need to basically like fight Seacrest to the death <laughs> it's you two. You know, it's 20. the two like hardest working men in Hollywood. Yeah, no. I, oh, there can only be one, man. I feel very blessed, man, to, to be as busy as I have being a former child actor, right? Yeah, it's, it's that hard is to kind of make that It is. Transition. I mean, you're you're one of the more probably the most successful like ever, to be honest. Oh, thanks. Man. It's a it's a hard transition to make, right? Like, you know, it's funny that you mentioned Seacrest too because he. Um, we used to live in the same apartment complex. Oh wow! For like a good seven years. Shit. No, yeah, no, when he just no moved from Georgia. At what age? At, is at, this? Um, Damn, what were we? We were in our 20s. I mean, that makes uh, sense. So, so it was in the 90s. No kidding. So, yeah, so at that 90s, point, yeah. he's, you know, you, you've you already, you know, had, like, fame. and he, But he's, at that point, he's not, he hasn't done I mean, I American just done, Idol. You know, I was he doing doesn't... a Saturday morning show and, uh, you know, Save with the Bell, right? Yeah, right. But he, uh, yeah, he was do he was a radio DJ as well. And he had just, it was a few years then, he had just gotten American Idol uh, after that. But, yeah, we lived in the same complex. Dude, is that how old American Idol is? Dude, American Idol's been on, like, 20 years or something. Really? Crazy. crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably at least, right? I mean, because it took a little break for a while, remember? Yeah, it took a little yeah, yeah. break, and then it came back um, on ABC. But I just thought it was funny, imagine because we used to live in the same apartment complex. Yeah, it's, it's, it's it's crazy thinking about like super famous people such as yourselves living in an apartment complex. Like it yeah. feels like fake. Like, yeah, feels... like, you, like you were taking like the garbage down to like the garbage room. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, like I lived, I lived a, in the apartment. A lot of complex. people lived in that one too. It was called Park Point. It was in Burbank, and I remember. So Seacrest was there. Jennifer Love Hewitt was there. <laughs> uh, Days of Our Lives cast was this is, there. This is like a reality show. It's like a of, joke. There was yeah. a lot of hot girls there. Too. I, I bet. Yeah. It was like Melrose Place. Yeah. We were like, yeah. That, that was fun. I was single. That was fun. Terry <laughs> was there. There was a bunch of... There was a bunch of people there at that particular. What, was I don't it, know why. Was it known was, as like if you're, you know, young? So they're, they're the first hype house. Tatiana Ali, they're coming to me now from Fresh yeah. Prince. Well, like, a lot, no, a lot of people were there. And Would all you guys the same hang time, out, or is it? Yeah, just... we'd have like there. There was like a big common area, and everybody would um, uh, kind of party around that common area. And I, the only reason I think a lot of people leave there, live there is because it was really geographically convenient to uh, yeah. the studios. Like it was right by uh, Universal Studios, Warner Brothers, and sure, it was sure. it was just right by there, and it just so happened like we all, well, yeah, that was those were good times. Like, hey, Jennifer, <laughs> hey, Tatiana, like meet me in the courtyard. We're gonna yeah. have a bottle of wine. That's that, unreal. I mean, describe a college dorm. It's like, yeah, it was really like, famous people. That was my uh, college experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that's <Park> wild. Point. <laughs> <laughs> that's called, yeah. That that I mean that had to be a fun time. Yeah, that that's, was fun. That's good. What, that was what's fun, man? Pre social media, pre you know, mm. uh, <laughs> what do you call it? Smart bro. What I mean. I mean, what what do you think say by the bell would have been like like say by the bell fame i know it kind of happened a little bit after the fact right we've talked about that before where in the the first initial run it wasn't this phenomenon that it became but if you were like doing the child actor thing with a popular show like that under the microscope of social media i mean well that wouldn't have been that wouldn't have been, I, wouldn't have been good. I, I mean i probably <laughs> would have been a lot more uh savvy about it so therefore careful about right. it but um just thank god it wasn't around it's so funny continue. everybody from like the previous yeah. era says that like oh i would be dead by now or yeah. like they would have fired I me just, or you know whatever I, mean, I don't i mean i wasn't acting a fool like doing stupid shit but i just would have it would have got me in a lot of trouble yeah. <laughs> relationship wise yeah, yeah. So, i mean let's just say from that back to the day. but i feel like you gotta have that sort of run because then you out. appreciate where you're at yeah. now, and because mm. after a while, because I started young, so that uh, yeah, sure. you know, after a while, it gets a little redundant, yeah. and you know, it gets a little. You know. P putting aside, like obviously, your life now with your wife, kids. I mean, obviously, that's like you know the best. What was like your favorite time period of life? Is it Saved by the Bell? Is it that time? Is it once you started doing this? Um, Make sure you subscribe to KFC Radio on YouTube to get all the video content. Uh, subscribe, comment, like, and make sure you turn on the bell notifications so you know whenever new video content drops. I want to say something, but the video has to be fast, so that's it.